my God, I'm doing it again. What's wrong with me, dude? Hello, everybody. Welcome back to lesson two in my PineScript course. My name's Matt. I run zenintheartoftrading.com. And today I'm going to pick up where I left off in my last video. If you haven't seen that, I'll leave a link in the description. But let's just get straight into it. In this video, I'm going to go over a couple of new methods of using PineScript to achieve certain things on your charts. Today, we're going to be covering plotting the lowest low and highest high over a set period of candles. This will just give you an introduction to a couple of the PineScript methods and functions. I'll also go over certain things like color and line width and transparency, a few things like that that will help you down the line. If you come down here, open up your PineScript editor, and here we go. Now, I've already started this script called Lesson 2, but apart from this, if you open this with a blank script, then you, this should be all the same as me, except for the script name. You can name your script whatever you like. I'm going with Lesson 2 just for consistency's sake. I'm going to be making a lot of these lessons, so I'm just going to call them by the lesson name. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to detect the highest candle over the past 50 candles. And it's really simple to achieve that. All we have to do is type this in highest, oops, caps lock, good old caps lock gets you every time. Uh, I should mention real quick that a lot of these functions that if you use uh, the wrong case, it won't work. If I go save here, I'll get an error. Could not find function or function reference plot. Uh, so keep that in mind. Spelling is extremely important when it comes to programming. Putting in the wrong bracket, uh, putting in the wrong quotations, anything like that will result in errors. It's very important that you develop an attention to detail when you're coding. You'll work that out through experience, so I don't need to go over that too much. Uh, but for the most part, you should really just copy what I'm doing note for note. This is uh, in school. They teach you not to not to copy other people's work in programming. It's the complete opposite. Don't try and be too original. Otherwise, you're going to run into all sorts of problems. So the first thing we're going to do here is type in highest high. And the highest high is going to be set to this equal sign means set this variable we're creating to this value we're about to define. And here we're going to use a PineScript function, an inbuilt PineScript function. This, all these functions make our job so much easier than if we were to have to code this stuff ourselves. And here's a good opportunity to show you another inbuilt feature of PineScript that you'll find extremely helpful in your coding, especially as a beginner. But if you type, start to type high, and then put an E on the end there, because we're going to type highest. But if you press control and then space, it'll list the inbuilt functions, built-in functions of PineScript. And so we're going for highest here. We're going for highest. And then all functions, inbuilt functions, which are equivalent to basically inbuilt scripts, this will return a value. We need to tell it what we're looking for here. So we're looking for the highest high. And we're looking over a period of 50 candles. That's all we have to write in here. You could write low in here or close, anything like that. And it will detect the highest low over the past 50 candles. I'll go over that in later videos. But for now, we'll just keep it simple because this is only lesson two. So that's going to detect the highest high. If I, if I change this close to high, click save, and then add to my chart, you'll see, oops, I forgot to set overlay to true. That's another thing that you'll learn through experience when and when not to use that. So now if I add it to chart, you'll see it draws the highest high. Oops, I made another mistake. Sorry, it's a bit early in the morning here. I've only had my first coffee. Uh, this is drawing the high of the candle. You know, before it had said close. Now it's just drawing the high. And we don't want that. We want the highest high, which is this variable we created here. Now, if I save that, it'll. there we go. You see? So now it's drawing the highest high over the past 50 candles. So if I do this, you see 49 bars on the 50th bar, this line starts to drop. And that's because it's detecting the next candle down, then the next candle down, and so on, until it's hit by price action. And I don't need to explain what this is useful for. There's all sorts of applications of this sort of code, but we'll go over that in later videos. For now, I'm just showing you how this stuff works. So we're gonna write in one more here. And it's going to be, oh, what is wrong with me today? Lowest low is set to the lowest low of the past 50 candles. And now if I come down here, 
type in another plot. You can have infinite amount of plots as far as I can tell. I've never reached a limit. So you can plot as much data as you want onto your charts. And this one is going to plot the lowest low. And now if I hit save, we'll see another line appear at the bottom here, similar to this top line, where it will be detecting the lowest low of the past 50 candles. If I click save, there you go. You can see that the line started to rise here and then it rose and rose and then price action hit it and the low began to drop because this became the new lowest low over the past 50 candles and so on, so on. And then now this is the current lowest low and this is the current highest high of the past 50 candles. So that's about it for this technique. Uh, but what if you want to change this on the fly? Right now, if you go up to the options, you've got no way to change this 50 value. And that can, you, no one wants that. The, the whole point of making scripts is to make it convenient. If you have to come down here and change this number every time you want to change the value, that's going to be very inefficient. So let's add an input function. Um, we're going to call this input function the look back. So this will be the look back period. We, you know, if you've got the RSI on your chart, I'll just show you real quick for those who might not understand exactly what's going on here. The, this length 14 is saying calculate the RSI value over the past 14 bars. So we want to do the same thing with our, with our look back, our highest high, lowest low indicator. And we're going to call on another inbuilt function called input. Now input allows you to create a settings menu where you can have all kinds of all kinds of value inputs from numbers to time frames to words what you know whatever you want to use in your script so there's three or four uh, variables we need to define in this function in order for it to work how we want it to the first is a title if you don't put a title in um, I, I'm pretty sure that when you open up the settings menu it will just be called whatever the the variable is so we want to call this, say, uh, look back period, or you could call it length, whatever you prefer. And we need to define what type of input this is. Is it a number? Is it text? Is it a time frame? Uh, in this case, it's going to be a number. And like I said in the previous video, there's a lot of jargon in programming that you'll have to learn. One of those is that numbers aren't called numbers in coding. They're called integers. The reason for that is because there's all different types of numbers. There's numbers with floating uh, decimal points. In PineScript, that's called a float, a floating number, floating point number. But we're not going to go into that just yet because, again, that's a little more advanced. We're just going to deal with a normal whole number, which in our case is an integer. So we need to type in that this type of input is an input dot. And then if you press control space, here's the list of, of inputs you can choose from. We've got bool, which is short for boolean. We went over that in the last video. We've got float, which I just spoke about, which is a decimal point number. That can be helpful for dealing with things like ATR, multipliers, and stuff like that. We've got integer, which is a whole number. That's what we're dealing with today. We've got resolution, which is time frame, basically. We've got session, which is a like real-world time setting. So you could set, say, between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. using this. We'll go over that in later videos. We've got source, which is open, high, close, uh, that sort of thing. Um, that can be useful for, say, we could change this to a source input. And so you could change this to be high, low, close, all of that in the settings menu. But again, we'll go over that in another video. We're going to keep it simple today. Um, string is text, just like Boolean is a jargon for true or false. And integer is jargon for whole number. String is jargon for text. And finally, we have symbol. Symbol is the currency pair you're going to be trading or the market, all that sort of stuff. Um, you can actually reference other markets in your PineScript code. So if you wanted to compare the price of the British pound and the US dollar to say gold against the Australian dollar, for, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you can do it in this script using the symbol input function, which is pretty cool. That allows you to achieve some, some really cool stuff, really advanced stuff. Uh, we'll go over that though again in another video. So today we're going to click on input integer. Now we also want to set the default value of this input because we don't want it to be zero. Otherwise, every time you add the script to your chart, it's just going to show the high, the re most recent high. So we're going to type in D E F V A L and that's short for default value. And we're going to assign this to 50 and that way we can replace this later with this look back variable and it'll look exactly the same when you first add the script to your chart, but then you can come up to the settings and, and mess around with the look back period. 
And we might as well, while we're here, I can do, this isn't really necessary, but I can show you how to set the minimum val, the minimum value, which is M-I-N-V-A-L, min val. The minimum value, we'll just set it to one here because there's no point in going below one with this sort of script. And just change this now to say look back, which is referencing this variable we just created. Put that on both of these because we want the look back to be consistent across both lines here. Um, you don't have to do that. You could have a separate look back for the highs and a separate look back for the lows if you wanted to. You just have to copy this line, change the variable name, and put that in here. But now if I click save, nothing will change unless we come up here and we play with this new variable setting that's shown up on our user interface. So we can set this to whatever we want. Say we want a longer look back, we can go 100. And if I click OK here, this, these lines will get longer because we're looking over a longer look back period. See? And there you go. You can change this to whatever you want. You could change it to a thousand if you wanted to. Um, yeah, that's about it. I'll go over a couple more features while we're here. I can show you a few more basic features like changing the color of these lines and the line width and all that sort of thing. Uh, but I should also mention that you can, we'll go over this again in later videos. There's so much to cover. I can't do it all in one video, but you can even reference other time frames. So you could be drawing the weekly high or the weekly low or the monthly high, monthly low, daily high, daily low, whatever you want. Pretty much any time period you want. You could do the three and a half hour high if you wanted to. There's, there's a lot of customizability. I think that's a word in PineScript. So yeah, even though this is quite simple, uh, these foundational functions and features can work together to create some really cool stuff, which we'll get to over the course of this course. If this is too simple for you, don't worry, we're going to get much more complicated as we go on and we're going to create some really cool stuff. So while we're here, I might as well go over some of these other features. Say you want to change this top line to be red colored. Uh, we have to change the plot function. We're going to add a couple of new variables to this. We're going to say we want to set the color. Color is set to color dot. And this color dot is going to select from the group of color names. So if we press control space here, you'll see here's a list of colors we can choose from. And we want color dot red because this is a resistance level theoretically because it's a high. This is likely to act as resistance on price, not support. So there's that. We're also going to set the transparency to zero. And the reason for that is because it makes the lines a little bit more vibrant, it makes the color stand out a little more. So transp, uh, T-R-A-N-S-P is short for transparency. So we're just going to leave that as transp equals zero. And that will set the transparency to zero. If you set this to 50, it'll be half transparent. Uh, but today we're going to leave it as zero. And then we're going to have the line width is set to two. I'm going to set it to two. Right now, this is set to one, which is quite thin. Um, you can set this as high as you want. I'm not sure how it will look, but two, I know two looks pretty good. So we'll leave it as two. And that's it for that one. We'll come down to the lowest low and we'll set the lowest low to blue. You could also set it to green if you wanted to, but we'll set it to blue for now. Uh, we'll also set the transparency on this to zero and we'll set the line width to as well to be consistent uh, just like in trading you want to be as consistent as possible with your coding and so that's it we click save and that will change the color of these lines in the line thickness just like that and there you go you've got your first little script set up you can change this variable you can change the colors of these. So you wanted this to be green instead of blue. And you wanted this to be pink because you're crazy. And there we have it. You've got your first little customizable script. And I've gone over a couple of really standard PineScript functions and features and variables that you're going to be using in your scripting. And this is a pretty good start, I feel. If you're brand new to PineScript, then this will give you, if you study what we did here and you play around with this stuff, you're going to learn a lot of the basics of PineScript coding. You're going to be using a lot of these features and functions quite often. I hope you found that useful and helpful. Uh, I'll go over a couple of other things really quickly. Uh, the first thing is all of these values are calculated on each tick, each price tick. So it's calculated on a bar by bar basis, but it's also calculated in real time. So if we go down to the one minute chart and I set this value to zero or oh, one is our minimum value and it appears the markets are 
closed right now, which is bizarre. I didn't think they closed on a Tuesday morning. I'll have to go to a different currency pair to see if we can get some movement. Um, I might just go to Bitcoin because Bitcoin's always moving. Come on, Bitcoin, you can do it. You can move further than that. There we go. So you can see this low is being drawn at the at the low of this candle. You're really not helping me here, Bitcoin. I was hoping you'd be moving more than this right now. And they say Bitcoin's volatile. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know this is a one minute chart. Do, 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 do. Where are the Bitcoin whales at? Come on. I'm going to change this value. Uh, to, I'm going to change this to say close. And I'm going to comment out this line just so that we can quickly get, get the idea here. See, that line just moved down. It's being calculated in real time based on the ticks of price action. You can change that functionality in the script. If you want it to only calculate based on uh, closed candles and not current candles, you can do that. But I'll go over that in other videos. But that's something important to remember is when you when when this code is executed each time price moves. Um, and one last thing I want to go over is, well, first of all, on my website here, I've got a few more lessons here. If you, if you want to jump ahead, because it's going to be take me a while to make some of these videos. But if you want to learn a little bit more advanced stuff, I've got uh, things here such as how to detect candlestick patterns and that sort of thing. So just go to zenintheartoftrading.com if you want to find this stuff. I'm going to make videos on all of this, obviously, when I get to it. But if you want to steal the code and do a bit of cheating, uh, here you go. You can come here and do that. If you're a little more advanced and this stuff is too simple for you, then come on over here and you can learn a little bit more advanced stuff before I get around to it with these videos. Um, one other thing I want to get into, I want to show you, Pine Script uh, Wiki. And you come up to the first link here, just tradingview.com forward slash wiki forward slash pine underscore script. I'll put a link to this in the description. You come here and, well, oh, never mind. They've moved it. <laughs> okay, I'll put this link into the description. So this is the new documentation for the latest version of PineScript, which is version 4. Uh, to be honest, this guide looks a lot better than their old guide, so it's probably a good thing they did this. Um, so if you want to learn a lot of the specifics, uh, like the language fundamentals, uh, this will quite be quite important, especially if you, if you want to get into really advanced stuff. Um, I'll, I'll teach you most of this stuff myself, but uh, it can be helpful to come here and find out some of this information. These are your like arith arith I can't speak this morning. These are your arithmetic operators. So for dealing with numbers and stuff like that, you'll find some really good stuff on here. So this is, this can be quite useful. Obviously, there's also the autocomplete function here, but you need to know what you're looking for before you can find it. So this site can be helpful for that. Uh, this is a great reference site. And that's it for today's video. It's already gone longer than I wanted it to. Oh, there's the volatility we've been looking for, Bitcoin. Finally, you've been asleep on us and now you're awake. Awesome. Anyway, that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one and we'll go over... What the hell happened here? We'll go over... Uh, some more advanced features of PineScript. See you then, guys. Have a great day. Good luck with your trading. Good luck with your coding. And I'll speak to you soon. See you guys later. Mm -hmm.